things first as I said in the last video um, I repurposed this box that I made in the first video in the series um, to now just hold the power supply um, power supply is rather large um, I think I over engineered it a bit um, but this is going to hold the filament supply and also the rather large um, high tension supply that looks like this and it also has a bit of stuff on the bottom has a transformer and all kinds of components um, but we'll go over that later so I'll just use this box for the power supply and then the amplifier which is quite a bit smaller um, let's hold it over here is um, going to go into another box uh, that I'm going to put next to it and I'll have two kerbals running over with um, uh, filament and, and heater supply and the nice thing about this is it will actually keep uh, the noise down as the transformer is a lot further away from the amplifier and uh, that's all kind of nice. So what is this? This is the high tension regulated supply um, and we'll just go over the components real quick. It has first of all a power transformer that is fed from the mains and this is just a 230 to 230 isolation transformer um, goes up to about 50 milliamps uh, which should be about right um, it's a bit tight but uh, if it shouldn't suffice I'll swap it out for another one later um, then I also have two vacuum tube rectifiers, those are PY500s, uh, those are grossly overrated. Uh, but because I initially wanted to put the uh, uh, amplifier in, in these three holes, they were actually too large to fit an, uh, a 9 pin, a B9A socket, so I put a larger uh, socket in and went with the larger tubes. Uh, I have tons of those, and they will last a very long time if you only put 50 milliamp through a tube that's actually rated for, I think, 400 or something. I like that peak is about an amp for those. Um, but they also look very nice when lit up, so... <laughs> um, yeah, you could easily go with a PY88 here. Um, would be perfectly fine. And we'll go over the circuit for this later, but this is not a center tap transformer. I cheated a bit by using two silicon diodes, but I didn't want to fit four uh, vacuum tubes in here. Um, and you, if you do it right, you could still get the benefit by this heating up slowly and so not stressing the, all the downstream tubes too much, because this will still heat up slowly and then the voltage will climb very gradually and it will only be up to the full 250 volts or, or whatever you need uh, once all the tubes are nice and hot so I've got that going for us which is really nice this is a large-ish electrolytic capacitor that I'll just fit in here this is probably going to uh, get a lot of radiated heat from those tubes um, yeah if it fails I'll switch it this is a um, a vacuum tube voltage regulator, a Russian octal socket vacuum tube voltage regulator, um, rated for 105 volts. Come on. Um, CS, I think, is the uh, European or is the uh, Latin. Uh, designation for that uh, C S three C. Oh no, I think C S S. I don't know. Uh, but this tube, 105 volt uh, Soviet age voltage regulator. PL thirty six over here, which is a common enough octal socket output tube in Europe. Uh, this one has its number rubbed off, but that's just fine. Um. And also, everyone's favorite pentode, small signal pentode, is the. Oh, this is actually not an EF80. Ah, uh, this is a EF. 
184. Um, but this works with an EF80. Um, I initially designed this for an EF80, but apparently, while well, I put this project away for over a year, I switched out that tube. Um, the EF184 is very similar to the EF80 um, and will work as a replacement in uh, robust circuits, which this apparently is, because this works fine with that tube. Um, I think this is a uh, slightly higher end gain. Yeah, let's look at the bottom. Um, it's not as interesting as the top side, but here's the two diodes uh, that I talked about, and we'll look at the schematic in a second. Um, but those basically supply the negative line to the capacitor, and those two vacuum tube rectifiers supply the positive line. I've got a sketching of resistors, and this is the supply uh, heat to supply dropper resistor, and this is the heat to supply dropper capacitor right down beneath it. Uh, also, a couple of capacitors over here. We're out of focus, aren't we? And a pot here to uh, fine adjust, finally adjust the voltage. And that's all about it. Um, this is a circuit that works fairly well. Um, I haven't actually tested it with the amplifier, but I've done extensive tests without the amplifier, and I've no doubt that this will work. If it doesn't, I have to redesign this, and we'll get yet another video about that. But so far, this should work. So this is the circuit. I'll just zoom in here. There we go. This is 30. Free ohm, by the way. So, first of all, we got our transformer over here. Um, and also the dropper cap, which is 4.4 microfarad. Um, there's actually online calculators for this, um, so you can calculate it out. Um, it's best to use a capacitor and resistor combination then you don't get um, as bad a surge if you're switching it on uh, at the wrong time. So, yeah, resistor-capacitor combination works fine. You minimize the power you're dissipating here. Um, this comes to about, I think, 295 milliamps for those tubes, uh, which is great works out very well. And this is the bridge rectifier, the slightly weird bridge rectifier that I talked about. Um, because I can't afford center tap transformers and I don't have center tap transformers because everything I have is from uh, the age where they used big selenium rectifiers um, like this here, which is made in Germany, um, but it says selenium rectifier. Um, and so they, they didn't have center tap transformers for quite as long here in Europe, I think, as they had them in the US. Um, uh, nevertheless, I wanted to use uh, some vacuum tubes to rectify it, but I didn't want to go all the way and put four in, so I ended up having the negative supply run through 2, 1, and 407. 4007 diodes and having the vacuum tubes up here and the nice thing about this is as those heat up there's um, no current flowing through this because they're not heating up so all those tubes here have time to warm up this actually doesn't have to warm up because it doesn't have a heater but uh, all the tubes have time to warm up so um, you're not hitting them with, with all the grunt of putting 300 volts onto a cold, um, cold anode while um, they're heating up. Um, because those take time, so that's great. Main filter cap, PL36 pass tube here, this is a series regulator. And from this supply we also derive um, an additionally filtered voltage for the anode supply of the EF80, which in turn supplies the screen grid here. Um, we've got all our suppressor grids 
tied to the cathode internally in this case. Um, schematic actually says EF80. Uh, maybe it's, I just put that other tube into test it and it still worked. Um, but yeah, EF80 here. Then um, this is basically an error amplifier supplying the grid of this tube. We've got the screen grid of this actually supplied through. Oh, this is actually wrong. This should this should go to the supply. This is wrong. Um, supply is taken from the cathode here, but we've got the output voltage going through here through a variable resistor. This is a hundred k. Through a 470k to the screen grid, you can actually adjust the voltage um, somewhat through this. Um, this circuit is older than the internet. Definitely, it's um, it's everywhere on the internet too. This is probably from. I think it's also in Seeley's, um, which is a, a very old and very famous book about vacuum tubes. Um, you should definitely look at. Uh, I think Seelys has something that's very similar to this. Um, yeah, but this is basically a regulated vacuum tube supply, somewhat similar to the one I use in my bench power supply, which is directly from Seely. And I think Seely was published in um, 1960, 4, 1961. So I think it was in the 60s, uh, but could be earlier. So yeah, this is basically the supply. You can actually adjust this from about, I think, 200 to 300 volts. Um, but I'll set it to 250 for the amplifier. And now the only thing I have to do is actually close this box up because this has no, it doesn't have any screws in it. Um, mount the filament supply inside the box and then uh, put some sockets on here so that I can uh, easily run cables to the amplifier and then this by now very long running project will be at an end. I've got the whole thing connected up and fired up um, now I also added a switch uh, and the fuse and the connector down here that we're going to talk about later um, but after firing up the power supply, uh, we can hear there's a pretty nasty crackle in on it. I don't know if I play some music. It's less audible, but it's still there. And I think it's got to do with the power supply. Um, because I have the scope on the power supply, and there's about half a volt of ripple on it. Um, so I have to try and get rid of that. Uh, maybe that's an issue with my regulator circuit down here. Um, can't say for sure now. So two things I did with this is um, first I added some bulk capacitance to the output. Um, and the second thing I did go over my schematic again. Which I'm just going to put here. Or maybe just shut off the power. Um, and there should be a capacitor, a 100 nanofarad capacitor, running from the output up here down to this point. And that should look like that. And it should look like this, um, with the output coming down here, through the capacitor and into the screen grid. Um, also, I have some bulk capacitance, uh, just 50 microfarad on the output now, and that brought the... Output ripple down by 
uh, to to around uh, 100 millivolts, which is still not great, but it's much better. Um, so I'll continue working on this. There's still something wrong with it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what. So I did some more tests on this power supply unit here. Um, since yesterday, I also added an indicator lamp down here, and I said switch and the fuse. Um, there was still an issue with that, and I can't really say why. Um, it's been over a year since I started this project, and um, I didn't really know um, what the issue with this was, and why it produced just so much ripple. And high frequency noise and whatever and it really sounded somewhat terrible um, when connected to the amplifier so um, I spent a little time trying to troubleshoot this and then I decided since I didn't like the internal construction anyway um, the way I put this together um, with the point-to-point -point wiring and everything, and it just all looked uh, a bit dodgy. Um, so, um, I actually rebuilt this in part over the course of this morning. Uh, it only took me a couple of hours, but... Um, now it's much cleaner, there's no high frequency noise on this. Um, also, I fixed a grounding issue that I didn't know that there was. Um, it all looks much cleaner now. So, i just lift this up here. We have the filament supply down there. And I'll just prop this up and somehow get it. Here. Yep. So what did I change? I put two strips of uh, of the turret board down here, uh, which I mounted all the components. And then I also cleaned up the wiring a bit. Uh, and also added this wire here that just links the high tension ground with the ground on the filament um, power supply down here. And that actually got rid of a lot of noise. I um, also added an indicator here. This is just a neon indicator. has a little resistor in a sleeve here. And there's a fuse just down in here. Um, uh, 1.7 amp fuse, which is um, a bit overkill. You need to actually short out either of the transformers to blow it. Um, or if there's a partial um, short on, on both, that will also blow the fuse. But 1.7 amp is uh, pretty conservatively specced. Um, but I don't anticipate any problem if anything goes really goes wrong with, with either of the supplies uh, it will blow the fuse so I um, also changed the component values here um, and I uh, sort of changed the topology a bit to what I did in my lab power supply which I built after um, I initially started this project, um, and I found a really good circuit in an old uh, textbook for symbol regulated supply. Uh, it's still adjustable with, with this pot here, it's currently set to 250 volts. And I think it looks quite a bit nicer with everything down oh. on that strip here. Yeah. So, yeah, this is what the supply looks like. Uh, we can now also 
look at the circuit for a little while. Um, the circuit is in this book, Electrical and Electronic Engineering Series. Um, and the title is... Electron tube circuits. Uh, now it's in focus, but the camera is bouncing back and forth. By Samuel Seeley. Um, and I've got the first edition here. Published in. This is printed, I think I said 1964, but um, this is actually printed in 1950, so there, I think there was a second edition at some point. Uh, let me just bring the camera down here a little, and maybe we can also zoom in on the circuit. No, this is not the highest quality video now. So, but you can see the circuit. Um, it's basically very similar to what we used before. And also I changed some of the values here. Um, I've got a different voltage regulator tube than 150, I've got 105, I've got an EF80 here and a PL36 here. Um, those two values are the same, those two are also left the same. I omitted this capacitor, um, some say you should put this in, uh, some other texts say you shouldn't do this, because you're basically building yourself a, um, uh, what is it called, Pearson Anderson oscillator oscillator, like a neon oscillator, if you, if this capacitor is too large. So, but if you really put a very small capacitance there, it might be actually beneficial for the performance of the voltage regulator tube. Although I'm not sure. Um, these values I didn't change. I changed the capacitor value up here. Um, this is a 47 instead of an 8, because um, large capacitors are cheap today. I did also not change this value. Um, uh, this capacitor is actually very important in um, see providing a feedback path for um, AC down to the screen grid here. Yeah, this is the circuit I used. Um, now it sounds absolutely great. And I will finish this project with that.